third time and it's, it's a dream project not only for the ISRO but you know for, for the whole country so if you could you know give us some insight into the goals and objectives of Chandrayaan 3 what you're you know working on Chandrayaan 3 has a similar goal as that of Chandrayaan 2 with some small variations in terms of the scientific objectives that we have wanted to do last time in the Chandrayaan 2 we could not achieve the soft landing and hence the lander and the rover where the scientific experiments were incorporated could not be accomplished so this time what we are doing is those missions those part of the mission is the focus achieve the soft landing then after the soft landing rover and, Chand and lander will do the scientific experiments send the data to us so that's the primary objective so uh, and the orbiter part which was launched last time is still working very well the Chandrayaan 2 and has provided information scientific data which is actually being used by scientists all over so, but uh, I must ask you, of course, you must have been asked this question multiple times. After the failure last time, it must have not been easy on the scientists at ISRO. And, you know, they say space is unforgiving and the margin for error is almost nil. You know, how do you really bounce back from a situation like that? And what have you really learned from, you know, the lessons that you've learned from that? You know, failures are always difficult. As you know, there are a lot of questions asked whether did you do it properly. There were any, um, you know, any errors that could have been avoided. No, your understanding level was it not was it proper at that point in time? All these questions do come, and uh, and unlike any other accidents that you happen on a terrestrial situation, the a, a hard landing on moon leaves uh, no no proof to us immediately. But of course, we can reconstruct through the orbital data and what could have happened are scenarios that we find out by simulation. And these scenarios we found out over the last many years, and it has been a very tedious work. Yeah. Uh, our first part is the was establishing what went wrong, and that went through very rigorously, bringing in a lot of experts from ISRO and outside, and we could reasonably find out what could have gone wrong. We also looked at what can wrong go further than what actually happened. There were there any resid resident errors and resident issues that could have manifested otherwise. So all these were the second part of the journey. The first part is establishing what went wrong. Second part is what can go wrong. And how do we really do this modification? And then do the modification. Then final part is test it to a perfection, to a level uh, that we are not done before. So all this happened in the last two, two years plus, And we made the next craft, the lander, the orbiter, and the rover again uh, except with that uh, orbiter part is slightly different without the or the scientific exper you know, experiments on board and the rover also went through a series of testing simulations to a higher level of you know uh, a dispersion handling capability and we are there now for with the Chandrayaan 3 on board LVM3 so it has been a very very tough journey for the entire team of Chandrayaan 3 project they went through very rigorous uh, you know, unforgiving lessons in their life, uh, answering so many questions and uh, reviews, etc. And I am very sure that through that process they would have become stronger. You have to be a master, isn't it? Because you have to tell them that there is no room for error. See, we always tell this because the space, uh, as you mentioned, the, 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 the crux of the, uh, the, the problem is that, that there are thousands of things happening in it and there are so many variables that are there and your ability to foresee a priori and design it with very low margin is the part. So uh, we, have, we don't have very high margin like terrestrial structures or systems. But in space, we need to keep the margins very low so as to save mass. And it still has, it has to hand, handle uncertainties beyond those margins. So this is a tough job. So you'll have to predict how much things can go beyond our expected boundaries and how to take care of it. So this is the affected now the, there were certain level of boundaries that we designed last time now this time we have to expand the boundary and when you expand boundary it has its own you know implications like increased mass increased yeah. power increased overheads so we have to handle that uh, with the available capability of the rocket so this is the uh, thing that we did sir in terms of the build and the technical capabilities how different is chandrayaan 3 from chandrayaan 2 and also talking about the landing spot uh, which spot in moon are we planning to land and why did we choose that spot what is the reason behind choosing that spot you are on your first part of the question uh, related to the change from Chandrayaan 2 to Chandrayaan 3. Essentially, the sa same three constituent elements of the Chandrayaan 3, like the orbiter, which is now called the propulsion module, the lander, and the rover, are still there. Still there. The orbiter part is not having any significant payloads like last time. Its primary job being take the lander and, uh, and the rover to a 100-kilometer orbit around the moon after the injection to the Earth orbit. 
And we have improved the propulsion module this time. This time the propulsion module is not improved. It is, it is, uh, you know, we removed the payload elements and it is given tasks only to do the function of reaching it up to the moon. Uh, and the second part is a rover, sorry, the lander is now heavier by almost 200 kilogram plus. What we did is there are many more changes done in the lander, it's primarily to handle higher velocities of landing. Uh, then it has more energy ca generating capability like solar power capability. It has more propellant to handle dispersions and uh, propulsion uncertainties. It has new sensors which will take care of the uh, fa sensor failures if at all it happens. Uh, it has um, uh, new algorithms and software sitting there which are you know, made uh, wider to handle. Its control and so guidance algorithms and softwares have been modified and ha capable of handling multiple paths of travel to reach the land, etc., etc. So essentially these are the changes. The scientific is part of the experiment, uh, the payloads on board lander and rover.